Hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, as I've said before, if you like the content of the channel, please feel free to subscribe and like. Um, today I'm doing a video on my Spinnaker Tessa Bronze, reference number SP506001. I did do a video about this before, but I wanted to improve on that video as I've had some things uh, I wanted to mention about the Spinnaker. Um, Spinnaker basically is a brand I'd never heard of, so I'm coming at it from a completely neutral stance. They, as far as I can tell, seem to make budget watches at the, um, say, 200 to 400 pound price mark uh, using mainly Seiko movements. And to be fair, they look like nice watches. I, I don't have any problem with them. This is their flagship model. This being the, um, their bronze case Tessa. It's retails, I believe, for around about $850 or £720. But it's Spinnaker seem to be one of these companies who are forever having um, sales. So realistically, this watch, if you buy this today from the Spinnaker website, will cost you around about £570. Uh, not sure in dollars what that is, but um, basically for that price, I think it's an absolute bargain. It's a Swiss made watch. The movement it houses is a Solita movement. We'll get into that a bit later. The, give you a quick dimensions. It's a 43 millimeter watch, 17 millimeters thick, though it does wear smaller than that, um, which you'll see on the wrist later. Lug width is 52 millimeters. Um, weight of the watch, around about 130 grams, maybe a little bit less. Um, Basically, this is um, a real kind of hardcore diver, really. Um, the main feature, I suppose you would say, of this watch, though, is its bronze case. Um, many companies seem to be doing a bronze watch in their lineup these days. It's very, almost fashionable. Um, bronze, a couple of years ago, I, I was... I wouldn't have gone near a bronze watch. I don't know why it never really appealed, but since owning this one, I do I do quite like it. Again, most of my watches are, well, I think all of them are stainless steel. And so this is quite nice to have something a little bit different. And for the price I got it for, I actually traded a brand new Seiko, um, what was it, a Seiko Paddy Turtle for this, um, which I did a video of before, which I just didn't like. Um, I think I picked up for about £320 from a dealer in the Netherlands, brand new. And comparing the two, this compared to the Turtle, I would have this over, over that watch any day of the week. Um, that's just my hum humble opinion, though. Not every I know there's um, a diehard um, fan base for the Seikos out there, and I completely understand why. But this, to me, is just that little bit different. I've... I find this just to be a fantastic, comfortable, everyday wearer. It's um, it's definitely different having the bronze case, and I love the fact that the hardware on the side, like it does actually house a helium release valve, which, let's face it, um, makes for fantastic bragging rights. Um, but apart from that, not much use to anyone unless you are a, a deep sea diver. Um, but I love the contrast against the stainless steel finish of that and the bronze case, as do I like the stainless steel back of the watch with the display case ha um, showing the movement. Um, this also is stainless steel as hoping as for not to get a reaction against your wrist with the, with the bronze, because that is a common um, thing with bronze watches. Um, and your wrist, you'll probably get a um, reaction otherwise. So overall, I say being a 300 meter diver, it has a very nice um, crown with 120 clicks. Not a bad sounding crown as well. Um, bezel, sorry, crown, sorry, bezel. Has a very nice sounding bezel, 120 clicks, and it does align properly. And the bezel insert on this watch is a 
um, ceramic. I say, I got this watch and it was about 10 months old. And the guy I got it off, to be fair, he put up sale, not many people were interested because they, they weren't great pictures. And there was a small mark on the, on the bezel, which I basically removed with a very, very light um, scotch Brite and a heck of a lot of water. Um, so it's, it's one of these watches, it looks better in the flesh than it does actually on the pictures, if that makes sense. Um, the insert houses a loomed ceramic bezel. One thing I would say, this is one of the original ones. So this watch only came out October last year. And the original ones have this inserted loom pip. Um, but now, my friend who's brought one, the font is slightly different. It's a little bit chunkier and rounder and it has no pip in there. The actual 12 o'clock marker is fully loomed. So I think basically it's cheaper to do it that way rather than after fitting the loom pip. So, but it's, it's neither here nor there. It does its job really well and it lines up perfectly. So I haven't got any problems with that. Play wise, there's perhaps just over a millimeter of play. So it's at this price point, fully, fully acceptable. The dial um, is a multi-layered dial. The main dial, which houses the Spinnaker logo and the automatic, um, the automatic writing and the um, water resistancy is a 3D dial with a nice wave print in there. And above that, I suppose it's almost like a chapter ring whole, um, housing the hour markers, which are fully loomed, obviously. And around the hour markers, it's the, they're framed in a bronze colored frame, as is the date window. The hands are um, brushed. Um, plenty of loom in there as well. So you get a good, loom wise, this watch is excellent. And I'll, I say, um, it lasts me throughout the night when I put a torch on there for a couple of seconds. Um, so I've got no qualms with that. The view is through a nice sapphire crystal, as is the rear, also sapphire. Um, the crown on the side is actually a steel crown um, to aid with the wear and it's also has a uh, Spinnaker logo etched in on the side on the clasp as well. It's also a um, stainless steel clasp with um, The Spinnaker logo also etched in there It comes on a leather strap and not every everyone you're going to get a lot of people are saying how can you have a, a dive watch on a leather strap, but this is a treated leather leather strap so it is actually supposed to be water resistant. So I don't know if it's, you know, what it's treated with, it's like a lot of wax or whatever, I don't know. The strap, it's actually, it, it is stated on the back, spinnaker on this side and on this side, it says handmade in Italy. And it is a very, very comfortable strap. It's thick and chunky, but yet very pliable. Um, it feels like, I don't know, like a real comfortable pair of shoes when you put it on. It it just, it forms itself really well. And it's also got the quick release spring bars on the, um, on the bars here. So you can take off the strap that easily and that quickly. Now, can I put it in that quickly and easily? Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Click, there you go. That's how quickly you can take the strap off on this watch. So, um, overall, it's just got a really nice feel to it. Um, if we go to the back, and then we can see the heart of the watch. And this watch, I say, is quoted as being a Swiss made watch. And one of the reasons for that, it houses a Solita SW200 movement, which is basically a clone of the ETA 282842. Um, it's a 26 joule movement has about 40 hours um, power reserve. Now, I had a small problem with this. I brought the watch, um, I say it was a year old, and I was manually winding the watch, as you know, I've got a collection, quite a collection of watches. And so when I went to put the watch on, I was manually winding it, and it just did not feel right. So, 
I looked at the back and, and then found that the rotor, it basically mashed the gears for the hand widening uh, mechanism. And turns out this is a common fault on some of the SW200 movements. So I contacted Salita, they, they gave me, uh, sorry, I contacted Spinnaker and they gave me the um, contact for their UK service centre. And to be fair, I had no problems at all. Sent the watch off, they were very nice. Um, um, so sent the watch, I got feedback saying it received a watch and so on. But when I got the watch back, um, it was only about, I think it took about four weeks, roughly. So it was a, yeah, respectable. They'd fitted a movement there, but there was, it wasn't a new movement as the rotor didn't have a spinnaker labeling on the back and where it says 26 uh, joule movement Swiss made, it was actually kind of partly rubbed off. So obviously this was just an old movement. They just fitted in the watch to get it to work. Um, I was not very impressed as you can imagine, contacted them. And to be fair, the guy I spoke to was extremely apologetic. I sent him pictures showing him you know, where I wasn't happy. And he sent me a returns label, so it didn't cost me a penny. I sent it back to him, and basically, I got it back in just over a week with the new movement um, and no problems at all. So, okay, I wasn't impressed, but it was wrong at first, but they rectified this quickly, so I can't really fault that. Um, one thing I would say, when I got the movement back, it was running about 14, 15 seconds a day, so I took the back off and I regulated it and I got it down to about five seconds a day. Uh, I don't wear this watch for much more than a couple of days like any of my watches. So I don't know long term if maybe it would level out and, and be better than that. But I'll link a video at the end which shows me, uh, shows you uh, me removing the back and regulating the watch using some phone software. Um, when it comes to removing the back, you have either this Rolex style knurling, so if you have a tool you can do that, which I don't, or you have the standard um, ones on the back for um, removing it with a cheap uh, few dollar tool. Um, so I used a tool like that to remove it. Um, but overall, um, it's, it's a, a real comfortable watch to wear. Um, the bronze itself, when I first picked the watch up, it was a real nice shiny um, bronze finish and obviously it's starting to age. Um, there are actually videos um, on how to remove a patina from the side or even the opposite way around, how to actually uh, make it age prematurely so you get more patina. So horses for courses depends on, on whichever way you you, know, you want to go. I'll show it on my wrist, um, quick wrist check. I'm sporting today the Rolex um, 50th anniversary Kermit which is ooh, uh, 11 years old now I think and you can see the similarities of the case design obviously it's been 43 versus a 40 um, the case is just very very similar they really have a um, sort of like a you know gone for Rolex style case which let's face it isn't a bad thing I'd say personally so if I put it on my wrist now Remember, my wrists are a fraction over seven inches. Um, I'll put that on. Two keepers on that strap. And that's it on the wrist. Now, it does sit into the wrist nicely. So, uh, so as I say, you only really read from just below the case back to there. So, funny enough, it doesn't look like a big watch. And on my wrists, it... You know, I think you could get away with smaller wrists with this, not a problem at all. Um, I do a very quick uh, loom shot, try and, obviously not the best, I'm trying to get the, the loom on the uh, bezel, um, but I'll, I'll drop in some better shots anyway. But for the price, I say, if this was any other, if you were to slap, you know, um, a Ballon Ross logo on this or any other, you could easily say this is a one, a one thousand to one half thousand pound watch. Not a problem at all. Um, so I think for what you can pick them up for, being around about five, five to six hundred pounds, I personally think it's a great watch. 
Um, yeah, what do you guys think? You know, leave some comments below so I've got an idea. Um, I try and get back to all the comments as soon as I can. So we'll wait and see. But anyway, so that's my um, review of the Spinnaker Tessa Bronze. I uh, hope you enjoyed. I say, if you do, feel free to like and subscribe. If not, I say you can't please everyone all the time. Okay, all the best. Take care. Bye.